These are oppressors washing oppressed people's feet. The the culture war is a, is a word game or, or a game of semantics. People who claim otherwise and use it to perv on little girls deserve to be made fun of and ostracized and cast out of polite society until they mend their ways. He did not subscribe to this whole oppressor-oppressed dynamic. No. And that is exactly what the commercial is doing. It is subverting, in my opinion, the Christian message of love. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Culture Contrarian Podcast with Thomas Sterling and Andrew. Hello. Hey, guys. Today, our topic is not all oppressed groups are created equal. You know, they just aren't. We're going we're gonna to start by going back a couple weeks to the Super Bowl. Uh, and there was a commercial that I'm sure you probably caught uh, called He Gets Us, or that mm-hmm. was the like organization or the tagline of the commercial. Mm-hmm. Andrew, I think you feel the most strongly about this. Do you want to dive in on that for us? Yeah. So for those who haven't seen the commercial, it depicts multiple scenes of Jesus washing. It's like the idea of Jesus washing the feet of others. But the actual person on the screen person is, is frequently, well, it's always a, someone like a suburban mom. Or I think they're the people washing feet are universally white people. Pretty much just white oppressors, yeah. quote unquote. And those who are having their feet washed tend to be like a, illegal migrants or homosexuals or various people who would be classified as oppressed groups by. I think one of them is a, a drunk mom in the kitchen having her feet washed by her child or something like that. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, and face value it's a very emotional thing. And, you know, I can understand why it feels like, you know, we should take care of these people. I, I get that. And the like motto was Jesus didn't teach hate. He washed feet. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The problem I have with this is that Jesus, he did wash feet, wash the feet of his disciples. That's a little detail. That's important. And furthermore, he did not subscribe to this whole oppressor oppressed dynamic. No. And that is exactly what the commercial is doing. It is subverting in my opinion the Christian message of love Mm -hmm. to a alternative message that is kind of a universalistic. Everyone's okay as they are. Just Mm -hmm. love them as they are. But also it's an oppressor. I, I see it also. And my understanding is they claim this organization claims that this was not their intention, but what I saw was this oppressor oppressed dynamic of these are oppressors washing oppressed people's feet. Yeah, I think that was pretty clear in in the commercial. And so I think it's interesting to note that there were a few like spinoffs made mm-hmm. of this commercial. One in particular was done by the Babylon Bee. Yeah. Our friends over at the Babylon Bee, you guys. They're the funniest people alive. Are incredible, yes. Go check them out if you have not seen anything from the Babylon Bee. I would be shocked if you haven't, but yeah, very good stuff. They created one where it shows all these depictions of people uh, suffering Mm -hmm. in these terrible states of being. And essentially it comes down to, it's like, he doesn't want you to change. He wants you as you are. He supports you and wants to be with you forever. Yeah, he accepts you. (laughs) So the, the idea being that the only person who doesn't want you to change and improve is the person who actually wants your complete and total destruction. Right. Anyone who loves you wants you to change and improve and grow. Mm-hmm. That's that's just the way love works. Correct. So this is relevant to the conversation about not all oppressed groups are created equal mm-hmm. because an oppressed group is oppressed because of an immutable characteristic. I think that's uh, a definition we need to that's make. That's the true proper definition, yeah. Right. And we would argue that in many cases, those who are being claimed as oppressed groups do not have immutable characteristics. They're, in fact, operating in behaviors that are ultimately destructive to themselves and to society. Right. One is oppression because, you know, like in 1960s Jim Crow laws, you know, black people were oppressed in literally, they weren't allowed to use the same water fountain as a white person. That's actual oppression. Right. And the other is, 
oh, I did this action and I don't like the outcome of my action. I'm oppressed. Right. And so it's really not showing love to these people to say, hey, you're fine how you are and you can continue in this destructive behavior. And although I mean, I do support people living the lives they want to, you know, they have a right to live as they want to adults do. Yeah. I, I think you have the right to live any way you want. I don't, I don't support lifestyles that are self-destructive. I don't support you in that. It but shouldn't be you have accepted. the right to do it. It shouldn't be accepted by society to engage in self-destruction. Yeah. But the oppressor oppressed group dynamic would be essentially it's a destabilizing idea yeah. that ultimately harkens from Marxist ideology and with the intention of destroying a civilization. Yeah, because it makes everyone either your enemy or, you know, someone who is on the same side as you. There's no middle ground. There's no, we're all just common travelers. It's just, if you're not with me, you're you're against me. That's kind of what it turns it into. Yeah. My problem with the ad was a little bit less on that end of the oppressor oppressed dynamic is is because this group purports to be Christian. And what I see there is a what i would generously call a christian light message or almost kind of pseudo christian because it it misses the essence of what the gospel is which is what the christian message is christ came to a world steeped in sin where everybody is infected with sin every single one of us are born into sin and that sin demonstrates itself in how we think and how we behave and what we what we love and what we hate. It's just it infects us in every way. And so we're in bondage, as the Bible says, to this sin. Sin is the greatest oppressor of humanity. Yes. And Christ came to free us from that sin. And the way in which he frees us from that sin is that he had to overcome, live the perfect life, and then die in our stead pay the penalty that we have incurred for our sin so that we gain his righteousness and therefore we also then are freed by his work from our from the sin that has condemned us from the chains that we wove ourselves just like jacob marley in in uh, right, a christmas card. right and so when the so when jesus washes the disciples feet in the upper room there's a scene as that's progressing, where he comes to Peter, he's kind of he surprised him because this is a behavior that was for you know a lowly servant. This mm-hmm. is not somebody their master would they would expect their master to do. And when he comes to Peter, Peter is the one who's the first to object to this and says, "No, you're not going to wash my feet. This is you know." And and you can kind of understand what Peter's thinking here. He's saying, "Wait a second, you're the master. You're the teacher. Why would you dip to this level to do this?" Because th- this is should be beneath you, and um, and Jesus says, if tells Peter, if I don't wash your feet, then you're not a part of me, you're not with me, mm-hmm. and that kind of shocks Peter. But I think Peter recognizes too that okay, then wash me, well, all of me, all of me. You know, Jesus then says, I just need to wash your feet in this. <laughs> but there is this sense in which the point that Jesus is making is, I, he. He is the one that has to wash. And then he says, mm-hmm. when he says, go and do likewise to, after this whole thing has gone on, because the idea is you need to be a part of Christ. You need to be joined with him. This is how you're joined with him. And then when he tells his disciples, now these are members of his group, now you go and do, uh, do likewise to each other. The idea being obviously serving others. And they do make this point at the, at the website when I looked at it, that they understand that they want people to, you know, the washing doesn't mean literally going and washing people's feet. It mm-hmm. means, you know, this spirit of, of, of willing to be do lowly service and stuff like that. But the biggest issue is we as Christians, the way we serve ultimately is we're, is we're pointing people to that which will save them, which is yeah. Christ. Mm-hmm. That, and so we come with a message of the gospel. And so when we do things and we reach out to try to serve people, and the reason you're saying it's kind of like the Babylon Bee had the thing where, well, come as you are, it doesn't matter, we're not going to change you. That's not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is you need to be changed because what you are is destroying you. But yeah. it, the message of the gospel is come as you are to be clean. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You, you, you have to, there's, it's kind of like the alcoholic, right? 
Alcoholic Anonymous exists to help people stop drinking, right? It, it doesn't say we're a group for alcoholics where we come and we just drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great point. Right? Yeah. It's to stop because what you're drinking is killing you. Yeah. In a similar way as, as believers, as Christians, when we come with the message of the gospel, we're pointing people to Jesus so they can be saved from, ironically, who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, right? I think that's a great point. And it's something that, as someone who gets too involved in politics myself, and I know lots of other people feel the same way, it's very tempting to say, oh, this person is, is doing what I believe to be the exact wrong thing for our country and for the world. I want them, you know, to die and burn in hell. And that's not the Christian response. No. <laughs> yeah, not at no. all. The Christian response is, oh, this person is doing the wrong thing for our country and the world. I want them to come to know Christ, repent, and try to make good. Yeah, you want to see change. You want yeah. to see blessing to happen to them. And in order for that true blessing, they need to be changed from from their destructive behavior. Mm-hmm. So when like when we talk about the problem with woke or the problem with transgender and all this stuff, and we're going to get into these oppression groups, the problem that we're pointing to is that these things are destroying them. Like it, I think yeah. transgenderism probably is maybe the most obvious one. Yeah. Because people are literally they're mangling their mangling own bodies, their own bodies to try to fit it to this fantasy that they've that they've embraced. And and in in the case. Well, in all cases, but the thing they're mangling is like, it's the part that in both, for both for men and women, it's the part that traditionally throughout all of history, that's the part you do your best to protect. It's the immutable thing. And, but it's also the thing, like if you're in danger, that's the first thing you cover to try to protect uh, from getting wounded oh, or yeah, injured. You're talking and about the actual physical. Uh, right. The, the, okay. the physical surgeries they undergo are literally right. like tortures at any other time in history, like the worst tortures. It's just incredible how obviously self-destructive this is. Yeah. So anyway, segue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> on, now that we've gotten to the trans stuff, I'll, I'll take one step back. Yeah. So the other topic that he gets us commercial is one thing we want to talk about. The other thing is this new uh, X-Men 97 cartoon show has just been announced, which is picking up where the X-Men cartoon from the 90s left off, hence 97. And of course, now in 2024, we know... No, there's all these trans people and gay people and non-binary people. So what are you going to do anytime you go back into the past if you buy into all that? Rewrite history. You're going to rewrite history. Revisionism, baby. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to pretend that all these things that never existed any time until now, or if they did, they were you know, a tenth of a tenth of 1%. And you're going to pretend it was super duper common. So that's what they've done. They've made this character who is a shapeshifter and can turn into men and women and stuff. And that's just his superpower. Uh, and his name is Morph. And they've made him non-binary. Mm. And I was reading an article on it. And it said, that's a change. He was never called non-binary in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason. What was he called? Morph? He was, yeah, Morph is his name. And he was just Morph. Yeah. Okay. I think maybe he was gay or something, but he wasn't non-binary. And they said, this is a change. He was never called non-binary back then. And yeah, because the idea of non-binary did not exist. It was not a thing in the 90s. But what, what were his pronouns in the 90s? Yeah, they were he, him. Because there was no idea that you could have any other option. I wonder what they will be now. Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. Who knows? Morph, morph self. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. <laughs> so people are upset about that. About the X-Men making this character non-binary who's never been non- non-binary before. Uh, and so they're going online and complaining about it, as people do. And then the thing that put me onto this was the response, which was, you're upset about the X-Men going woke? They've been woke since the 60s when they were a commentary on the way black people were being treated under Jim Crow laws. Well, as our title says, not all oppressed groups are created equal. Non-binary people are not an oppressed group. Neither are trans people because that's a behavior-based reaction that they're experiencing. It's because they behave a certain way that they're experiencing a certain reaction. Black people weren't behaving anyway. They were just living yeah. and experiencing that reaction. That's why they were oppressed. Correct. Uh, also, this is not really important, but I will just say, I don't believe there are any men who are non-binary. I think everyone on earth who identifies as non-binary is actually a woman. <laughs> really? In my experience, I've never seen in real life anyone who claims to be non-binary who's not obviously got XX chromosomes. Fascinating. Well- I guess maybe that's true. I don't know. Because my theory is that men just want to be women and women just don't want to be women. 
Yeah. So essentially, it's a war on women. Yes. Every bit of it's just a war on women. Shocking. Shocking, yeah. indeed. Yeah. I, I do think there's a little bit of room for a caveat here when we talk about oppression in regards to groups. We're talking about the way it's kind of, there's so much conflation on these issues. Like we talk about the oppression that women have historically experienced from a, you know, misogynistic society uh, across the world or something. Mm -hmm. We've talked about how within the American context, blacks were slaves, the majority were at least in this country, which is why they're here historically. And then after slavery ended, the, the, in the deep south, in the south at least, there was the Jim Crow era and everything where they were oppressed under the law and the segregation, which you referenced the 60s, mm -hmm. was about ending that, those laws, ending that segregation. And that all that oppression was based upon their immutable characteristics. They were, they were of a certain race, or you could say with women, they were of, a, they were of the female sex. There is groups that can be oppressed against based upon beliefs we have to probably put that yeah, in there that is true yeah because christians muslims sikhs di these are different religious sects you could say that depending on the context in which they found themselves throughout history have suffered oppression uh by a dominant culture yeah i guess that is a carve out where i guess it is behavior based but it's we, we would carve say, it out because we say right it's a it's a worshiping it's, god is is it's a something that all humans do i would say it's a faith based a, a faith based group from which behavior obviously is going to come out of whatever mm -hmm. you 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 it's, depending on what you believe you're going to act on that right yeah i i guess the reason we have that carve out is cuz we tried <laughs> oppressing people based on their beliefs for thousands of years and it just led to endless wars and we were like let's stop having endless wars right. And just say you're allowed to believe and practice your belief as you wish. Well, I mean, the foundation of this country is what's ironic about the era we're in right now, where we're talking about these oppression group dynamics and the hierarchy of oppression and all these things that, that woke kind of ideology has been pushing. The United States is a country that explicitly, I idealistically grew out of this desire to raise the individual and say that the individual, all individuals are created in the image of God and therefore have inalienable rights. And those rights are to be recognized and protected. And so why as a nation at the very beginning, we kind of had this understanding of freedom of religion that we codified is because we recognize that people as individuals see things differently, uh, may have different understandings now we have broad cultural values that we all have adhered to within this understanding that all men are created in the image of god and therefore have value and therefore that needs to be protected and those rights that are associated with that need to be protected it's so it is ironic now i, I say this was the ideal obviously at the beginning <laughs> we we started with slavery being uh, the law of the land in half the country which was it took a while to get rid of that problem. Yeah. Even though they wanted to get Even rid of it though from they, the very beginning. Yeah. It was a compromise that obviously happened in, you know, after the war to gain our independence. And so, you know, that that is the struggle of the constant seeking to realize the ideal, but the ideal itself wasn't wrong. Um, and the country was founded on a principle that shouldn't be thrown out and said, oh, this country was only founded on, uh, racism or or oppression of others or you know you know a white what do they call it like a white nationalistic or white yeah yeah white nationalist yeah focus all that all that does is try to push this a dynamic of the oppressor oppress narrative that's not what our country has ever upheld as a value system never has doesn't mean that there hasn't been moments like we said where these those things have happened and in fact Honestly, we're in one right now. Yeah. The ideal, though, has always been all men should be equal before equal. the law right. and, and given a fair shot to exercise their abilities to make the most of, of their life. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's been the ideal we, we've sought, we, we should be seeking and, and focused on trying to uphold and fighting against anything that would say, no, we're not going to use that. I, we're not going to uphold that standard or use that ideal anymore. We're going to mm -hmm. go to something different.
And this yeah. woke oppressor oppressed ideal is in direct contrast with that. Yeah, it violates yeah. it yeah. violates the very concept of the of the inherent inherent value of the individual. Because what we're saying is you as an individual, that doesn't that matters less than what your group yeah. you're connected to is. Yep. In the beginning, America, which came out of all these monarchies in Europe, was right. saying all that history doesn't matter. You are now standing here on your own two legs. You're free to make all the choices you want to make that are legal and don't infringe on someone else's rights. And now we're saying, no, actually, everything you do has to be judged based on the past two, three, four hundred years of history, but not the past 4,000 years of history, because then that would be too much context. What's that from? I, it's not from anything. That's oh, just, just, that's just me. Because if you look farther back than right. 500 years, then you have to say, well, yeah, I guess, I guess the, the Huguenots in France, they were oppressed people. The, you know, the Anglo-Saxons in England, they were oppressed people. Turns out everyone's oppressed sometimes. Yeah. The oppression Olympics. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> that's a skit. Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. Well, another, another thing that happened in the past week we're recording on uh, february 21st is this funeral uh, at, yes. at saint patrick's cathedral in in new york city which is one of the most famous catholic churches in all of the world it's beautiful yeah and it's in all sorts of movies it's in the daredevil tv show obviously because daredevil's a catholic it's in all sorts of stuff home alone i think home alone yeah uh, two isn't it i think so I th yeah, we like think when we, he's we didn't lost, check on that one so when he's lost in new york home alone lost in new york right yeah, yeah. so they they held this funeral there and, and they when the funeral was being arranged, they didn't actually tell the priests who the person being buried was going to be. They didn't tell the priests really much. They just scheduled it and the priests were like, sure, you can have your funeral here because that's an appropriate use of a cathedral or a church. Turns out the person who was being buried was named Cecilia Gentili. Cecilia Gentili was, I believe, actually a man, but of course all the articles say her, so it's a little bit confusing because they try to make it confusing, but a trans woman meaning an actual man dressed up like a woman, uh, who was a former sex worker, prostitute, at the funeral, it was completely sacrilegious. It was completely disrespectful of the cathedral. They eulogized this person as Saint Cecilia, the mother of all whores. Oh my gosh. In a Catholic church. Ugh. And so understandably, Catholics across the country and the world have been upset about that. Yeah. And they're saying, you know, we need to like exercise this this church now because you've disrespected it so severely. But the reason I bring that up is that's not the action of an oppressed group. Oppressed groups don't go pick fights. Yeah. <laughs> they don't do that. They might pick fights if it's absolutely necessary. This was not absolutely necessary. This was them seeking out a fight to go to go fight and and to disrespect what other people hold sacred and and view as holy. And it's just these people are not oppressed. They're not oppressed in nearly the same way as black people were in the 60s. It's just not comparable. But they would demand that priest wash their feet, I guarantee it. Yeah. Well, I think there's a part of the, the, the culture war is a, is a word game mm -hmm. or, or a game of semantics. Yeah, the subverting of language. Yeah, like what, when, they, when they use the word oppressed, what do you actually mean? Because they could say failure to failure to support or failure to ally with or failure to celebrate me oppresses me. I mean, I, I think if you're if you aren't successful in every endeavor in your entire life and it's not all demonstrably your fault, you are an oppressed person under their definition. Okay. It's probably fair. So, I, I mean, I think this part of, part of the games that are being played around this, the, the, which make I think which throws so many people off guard. Like we've talked about the way the term racism is used. It's a word that most people have a think they have at least at least of an older generation have a pretty good grasp of at least historically what that word meant. So Thomas, what does racism mean? Racism? Yeah. Racism is when you judge another person, prejudge another person. Oh, prejudice. Yes, based solely upon their their ethnic or racial phys physical yeah their reality. their heritage but their, you can kind of boil it down to judging people based on skin color skin color is the yeah. easiest way to say it and yeah. and then you know that's that's the true definition that's the true definition mm -hmm. that's the historical one even the term you could say the term racism is a term that actually came into existence in the early 20th century a lot of that has to do with the war mm -hmm. we saw in the, the second world war but i think that's the reason why some, these these debates or these 
discussions even regarding these issues, there's even a lack of clarity as to what what's being talked about. Like you say, well, they're not oppressed, and they're going to say, no, we are oppressed because, and then they'll point to something. Yeah. So what this is this is half the battle is even just because they changed the definition. Yeah, so so finishing up the thought of racism, the new definition of racism. Right. It's not just about skin color. It's not just about right. your your racial background, makeup, or heritage. It's about uh, are you in power over the other person? If no, then you can't be racist towards them, no matter what judgments you're making. You you have to be someone in power, basically holding down somebody else. It has to be oppressor oppressed to be racist. the The oppressed cannot, by definition, under their definition, be racist. Well, I mean, and even that is like, what do you mean by power? Effectively, what they're saying is the majority, which they will equate to if you're if it's in a majority group, then therefore they have the cultural power i guess you could say well they would say that but they have their own little carve outs in that of course because they I would mean, never say that the white kid in a 99 percent black school can be a oppressed. victim of racism yeah it's it's yeah it's a game it's a semantics game more than it is in dealing with actual facts and that's the trouble and it's and it's hard and in it you know in the world we find ourselves in right now where Postmodernism has effectively eviscerated the notion of absolute truth or or the meta narrative that we all are part of as a humanity. It allows for the ridiculous notion of my truth, yeah, and which, which is, is a fallacy, which is a fallacy, which completely. is the notion that my subjective experience of the world equates to absolute truth for me, but nothing outside of that is greater than that. And so when someone says, well, you're not like, for example, with the whole debate we're having about transgenderism, someone can say, well, you objectively are male. They say, no, that's not how I, inside me, recognize myself to be. Right. And I mean, what do you say to that? You can't say, no, I know what you're thinking about yourself inside you. Yeah, I have no idea. That's why it works. Well, right. That's why it works. And and I'm going to say the thing that the, I think the is the correct response to this. Completely yeah, disagree they with, they disavow yeah. any and all statements about to come out of my mouth. Yeah, my thoughts are my own. <laughs> Scoot away from Sterling. <laughs> but in response to things like that, and I'm not talking about you know ten year old kids who've been raised trans by their parents. That's a different situation. Even you know twenty year old kids who who've been transitioned across their t- puberty. I'm talking about the forty year old man or the sixty year old man who is currently or he may have been suspended. I haven't heard about it. Swimming with 13 year old girls Ugh. in a swim class. My response to that person who he's, he's a six year old man. He identifies as a 13 year old girl. So he says, I'm, I'm a woman, but I'm actually a girl. My response to that is bring bullying back. That guy needs to be bullied <laughs> until he stops. That's my response to that. That uh, clip is going to get pulled out of context. Yeah. Well, so bad. I put the context in there. So, yeah. so, you know, they'll take anything out of context, but it's 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 claiming that a man can become a woman or a woman can become a man is to me the exact same level of is of insanity as the thing you're also seeing today of two plus two can equal five. Hmm. Two plus two cannot equal five. Two plus two every time across history, across the universe, down to the barest atoms, equals four. That's what it always equals, that's what it will always equal. You'll never make it five. Same with a man cannot become a woman. A man is a man. He can't become a woman. It's it's not in the realm of possibility. So these people who claim otherwise and use it to perv on little girls deserve to be made fun of and ostracized and cast out of polite society until they mend their ways. That's what I mean by bullying. I don't mean go beat them up. I mean, you cast them out. You do not associate with these people. Yeah, I think that's a fair point, particularly from the extent that they are uh, impacting innocent individuals and minors particularly yeah or or even you know the leah thomas who's stealing podium spots from actual women yeah he's more of a victim than the 60 year old man but still he should be ostracized and cast out of that that sporting event and this goes to a fallacy that we were kind of i remember especially growing up that has been exposed and the notion that now let's put it this way the, the way they like to put it what you do in your own bedroom doesn't impact anybody else around you. It's it's always been a lie. That's not true. What you 
what you behave, what you embrace, what you engage in is going to have an impact on society, even though you can't immediately see it necessarily. And I think that that, in one sense, ironically, I think the woke know that, which is why the word tolerance is almost never used anymore. Interesting. Tolerance was the word that was, when I was growing up, that was the big, well, we just need to you need to learn tolerance. I think bro. when we were young, it was still it, the it was definitely a watchword of the left. Right. Yeah. It's like you don't have to agree, but you just have to tolerate. You agree to tolerate. That was kind of the idea, right? Coexist. Yeah. Which um, is much different than embrace. Right. Because now what you're hearing is if you have a preference not to date trans women, then you're transphobic. No, yeah. And, and you need to date that trans woman, no. even if you're actually only attracted to XX chromosome people. Well, there's this. There's a threat. There's an inherent threat that if you don't embrace this new morality, lack of a better term, then by not embracing it, then you are endangering it. And so they recognize that you there's no such thing as this kind of neutral ground that in the past we kind of generally as a culture had, had kind of bought into. Oh, yeah, there's this neutral ground – and we all are kind of in this, and we have our little areas within it, and we all can run around and kind of get along in it. It's kind of predicated on the individual and the freedoms of, right? you know, that are the ultimate, you know, the original idea right. of our nation. And on agreement on the basic facts, like well, two plus two equals four and men can't be women. But there's an yeah. agreement on a, on a, like you're saying, on a, on a cultural value system that everyone is within that. Now, there can be disagreements in places within that, but even how those disagreements occur, there's a mechanism by which you were to engage. That is even being rejected. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's part of it when we're talking about, we use terms like the atomization of, of the West or the society where, where tribalism is on the rise. And there's not even a, like we even pointed out earlier, I pointed out earlier, even language we use isn't, the same things aren't being communicated. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily saying that every time someone uh, like on the left or someone or transgender talks about being a part of an oppression group or they being oppressed, I'm not saying that they don't genuinely think that's what's happening to them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what I'm saying is we have, even the definition of that term has lost an agreement. Yeah, mm -hmm. We're hearing one thing, they're saying another thing, and it's just like we're not, we're not even communicating properly. Part of that, is intentional by certain elements and another part of it is just the natural ramifications of this ideology that so many of people bought in even if they haven't bought the other stuff which is this notion of you know everyone can kind of have their own truth i mean for a while we thought science is going to stop it science is going to be the, mm -hmm. the the delimiter that says oh you can't cross over here and then we've got you know what's his name levine not levine tyson Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson? No, that scientist. Oh. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil yeah. deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Saying, Who, saying that gendered bathrooms are old well, school. No, saying that gender is a spectrum. Yeah. And arguing for that. And he's, and he's this, you know, renowned ast astronomer, isn't he? What is, what is this? Yeah, he's an astronomer. But a scientist. Mostly he popularizes, promulgates yeah. scientific ideas. That's right. his main right. career. But, you know, that. He feels obviously he's felt because I don't. I'm convinced that ten years ago he would have never held a position on the name. He would have said gender is binary. Oh yeah, with so many of these people, they they toe the line, they mouth the words, but you just know that either they've been coached to say it, or they're too afraid of the ramifications if they say what they think. Yeah, and I think I, that's what it is. And I know from experience, sometimes if you say what you think, you're gonna lose a dedicated friend group that you love. It's happened to me. Mm -hmm. It yes. sucks. Yeah. I understand why you'd want to keep quiet. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it goes to what the kind of the topic of this, the, the, you know, not all oppressed groups are the same, but there's this, it's, it's the underlying thing that ironically there is a binary mm -hmm. and the binary is, are you on the side of this group that says, you need to see all the oppression that these different groups have faced and you need to be an ally, which is what I think Neil deGrasse Tyson has basically done. Or are you on the other side that rejects that and therefore you're kind of now in the outside group 
culturally speaking, because, and you've been labeled a hater or some other epitaph. And there's different people in that other group yeah. who, who deny it. Some people are haters. Some people just are like, that's perverted. That's gross. I don't want anything to do with that. I hate that. Other people are saying, I love you too much to play along with your lie. Yeah. I, I can't do that because it's bad for you and it's bad for me to play along with it. Mm -hmm. right. So I can't do this. Yeah. There is a difference. And frequently, I think those two get intertwined from the perspective of the other side. They say, you're all the same. And I think that's what that commercial, He Gets Us, kind mm -hmm. of does. Is it, it makes it, especially the tagline, which is, Jesus didn't teach hate. He washed feet. Yeah. And he's saying that basically everybody who's on the other side is a hater. Right. And so then it shows the pastiche of all the images. And it's, okay, so if you are against abortion, you're a hater. If you are against illegal immigration, you're a hater. If you're, if you're against homosexuality, you're a hater. That's inherently what the, the commercial says based on the system it set up and the words it said at the beginning. And I, do, I reject that. I don't believe it's true. Yeah, you reject the premise. Yeah, I reject the premise. Yeah. All right. Any other niggling thoughts to get out there? I, mean, I hope that my list here. I hope that we can learn to talk to each other with agreed upon terms. But I and I think, like you said, Thomas, that may in some in some ways be like the crux of the issue here is we've lost any common ground, yeah, and ability to talk on the same terms with one another. And when you lose that ability, then I mean, there's really no cooperation. Yeah. I think that's exactly right, Andrew. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to see when you're in the midst of it, how that, how this is going to play out fully. In some ways I see that there are some bright spots in the, in this kind of culture. I, I feel like more people are like aware of what the culture was and not just aware, but are more aware of the ramifications of it. Like where, if this goes this way, you know, the joke used to be, well, the slippery slope argument is really, is really a red herring. It's not really mm -hmm. true. Nobody now, I think would say that. I think everyone. The evidence seems, seems a bit clear. Everyone yeah. seems so many slippery slopes out there that, you know. I mean, no, no one is sitting there saying that's ridiculous that you, c you can't start here and end there. There's no, now everyone's seen so many evidence so many examples of that within literally just a couple of years. If you now, were alive before the Supreme Court decision at Obergefell in 2015, yeah. if you were alive to remember the argument yeah. just in the months before that decision came down, and if they say this, if they let gay people get married, all these things will happen. Well, all those things have happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or they're in the process of happening. Yeah. Uh, well, it's because the institution and the understanding and definition of the institution of marriage the Supreme Court effectively stripped away any actual definitional understanding of what it was anymore. And so it became whatever you want. If you feel it, then it is it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. When you lose the definition and then embrace the murkiness of yeah. saying that truth is subjective, then there is no cooperation. And I think that's that's been a deliberate effort to to take issue after issue and turn it from clear cut black and white or you know maybe one shade of gray to as murky as we can possibly make it yeah it's we're in the midst of a cultural revolution no question no yeah. question all right so what did we talk about today the commercial he gets yeah, us he gets yeah. us oppressor oppressed dynamic from yeah. that and that jesus didn't play that game question now i know you're going to bring up the next thing which is x-men x-men mm -hmm. how can it still be called x-men yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a great I know. Question. You'd think they had gotten around to that one already. They've they've had several teams since then that they deliberately walked away from that. So like okay. after the X-Men, there was a team called the X-Force. But that was like, I don't I don't know. I, I want to say the 80s. I could be entirely wrong. Uh, so they've tried it a few times and X-Men's just, it's stuck. You know? Interesting. How about they should try out X them? X them. <laughs> there you go, Andrew. You should get you should get hired by Disney. I know. Yeah, yeah I'll put in my resume. <laughs> yeah. So so we did talk about X Men and and how they're rewriting history to introduce concepts into the '90s that just did not exist yet. We've we've obviously we've talked about trans quite a bit. We've talked about you know actual oppression like we saw in the '60s or I didn't see, but some people saw in the '60s and and the faux oppression that we're seeing today, which is not really oppression at all. 
Uh, we talked about St. Patrick's Cathedral and the, what I would call, attempt at desecration. I think that's, if I had to guess, I'd say that was the motive for a lot of those people. And just the fact that we have to be able to agree on something or there's no communication at all. There's no society. Yeah. It's impossible if you can't agree on something. All right. Well, that was our episode for today. Maybe next week we'll try to pick something a little bit bouncier, happier. All right. This has been the Pop Culture Contrarian Podcast with Thomas Sterling and Andrew. We're brought to you by the Patriot Post, which is the oldest online conservative news digest. It is right. It's free. We hope you'll like and subscribe. Bye. Bye. See ya. <laughs>